Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War Warhammer 2 Quick Match Gameplay. This time around we are on Karak Ungor playing as the Empire against the Force of the Dawi. And this time around we are bringing the finest Imperial War Machines to bear against these foul mountain dwellers. So, for this build I wanted to try something a little silly. Normally, there's a, there's a few different builds I try. I try all sorts of stuff against dwarves because uh, dwarves are a fairly predictable faction. So you can generally, it leaves you with a lot of room to experiment because you basically know what to, you can expect. Um, and just built the counter it and try different ways to counter it. But I wanted to try steam tanks. So steam tanks, if you try to push them in and your opponent has a bunch of thunders, and these guys are friggin' atrocious. They will get melted in like two seconds flat. But if your opponent has artillery and you can stand off, these guys can trade really well with stationary artillery. They're fairly accurate. They can generally snipe down guns. And they're pretty tanky. Your opponent probably won't have more than like two or three cannons. And with some heals from a Jade Wizard, you can heal through it, destroy your opponent's artillery pieces, and then finally push in with your infantry and the steam tanks, using them in a chariot roll to compromise your opponent's troops. So that's basically what I went into this game thinking of doing. Uh, for my lord, I brought Karl Franz on a horse. Um, nothing fancy. He's got the Reichland Runefang. He's got Sand Your Ground, Hold the Line, and Foe Seeker. I think Karl's pretty solid in this matchup because anti-large AP, or sorry, AP, mobility, are some decent armor, all very good. Can't go wrong with that. A Jade Wizard with Earthblood Regrowth and Life Bloom, as well as the Power Stone, just to provide some heals. And then an Infantry Line to mob my opponent, composed of Great Swords and some Chevron Up Swordsmen on the flanks, and a single Neo Sigmar Stunts in the center. I figured if my opponent brought Gyrocopters, the Steam Tanks should be okay at shooting them down. Steam Tanks aren't terrible anti air platforms. Now, for my opponent, he decided to do a bit of a mixed Vanguard and Blob build. So, for his Vanguard, he has doubled up Miners with Blasting Charges and the Norcal Iron Breakers. Uh, blasting Charges are a really nasty tool against Empire. Empire just kind of struggles to deal with them because you can't just charge headlong with your heroes or cavalry. Those will probably get shot to death. Um, Empire shooting often, if you don't overinvest in it, will often suffer from dwarf shooting. And uh, even against Great Swords, Miners with Blasting Charges will get some good work done. For the second line, my opponent did bring some Slayers for that anti-large. They're both generic units of Slayers, so no fancy slows from the Dragonbacks. A whole line of Longbeards. Uh, these guys, interesting choice. Given that he's gone very infantry heavy, I would say Great Weapons would be a smarter pick here. But uh, he did decide to go with a bunch of Longbeards. They are backed by a Runesmith on either end. Both runes, well, actually only one Runesmith equipped with all his runes. Rune of Wrath and Rune and Rune of Negation as well as Forge Fire and Rune of Oath and Steel. Personally, if I had a recommendation here, I would have dumped the Rune of Oath and Steel on this guy and put a Rune of Negation on this guy. I'd also dump all the Forge Fires, because in my opinion, those are kind of useless, especially when you're going non-AP with a bunch of long beards. My opponent's only AP tools here are these guys, which, um, and I guess the Ultar Raiders, but it doesn't affect their missile damage. Now, the Dwarf Warriors with Great Weapons back here providing a little bit of AP punch. Personally, I would say you're better off utilizing... Uh, long Beards with Great Weapons for that front line if you really care about that sort of stuff. Uh, Dwarf Warriors with Great Weapons kind of suck, but um, definitely cool to experiment there. Great Swords don't have the best melee defense, so they can get some work done. Ulthar's Raiders for that quick melting power, and uh, yeah, that's it. Rune Lord, I guess, on his uh, toilet seat, who is fully kitted out as well, though no Missile Resist Shield, no or no Rune of Krogni. Now my Steam Tanks here fired off a few volleys into the Norgamans Iron Breakers, a few into the Miners, and are now charging in. I knew my opponent might have some Miners, but I figured, you know what, what the heck, in come the Steam Tanks and in come the Imperial Chariots, and you can see they're just piling through. I do spot the Ulthar's Raiders and decide, you know what, discretion is the better part of Valor, let's fall back. And <laughs> so we're gonna retreat. I wasn't really in the mood to like kite my opponent. Like, technically, what I could do in this game, because my opponent was very slow, he didn't bring artillery, what I could have basically done this game is Benny Hilled around the map and sniped away with the steam tank, but I'm really not a fan of strats like that, I don't like that. Uh, so we're gonna push in with our infantry, Carl and company, and just plow through. And so you can see the steam tanks here just pushing aside the rune lord. There's all these runes being popped defensively, which is kind of pointless because honestly, I didn't care for any of these troops. The steam tanks are going hunting for one unit and one unit only, and that is these poor Ulthar's raiders. Now, as we all know, steam tanks are pretty damn slow. The 48 speed is not going to impress. Uh, yeah, there's not much to say. They're damn slow, but and they're getting winded just from the act of moving, I guess. I, it's kind of sad, but regardless, we're going to be able to start pushing these Ultra Raiders, trying to uh, attack them. In the meantime, over here, the infantry lines are starting to clash. You can see these poor Slayers overextended into the Sigmar Suns, which ended very badly for them. While over here, the Jade Wizard is going to bog down these Miners, which is going to then allow these Swordsmen to get into the fight. And this is very important with Empire. If you you need to deny your opponent use of Blasting Charges somehow, uh, if he's got them. So this is a good way to do it. Swordsmen come in, and they're going to be able to muck up and destroy these Miners pretty efficiently. Miners have trash melee stats, so a unit with good melee stats like Swordsman will, despite the armor, just destroy them. 
Elsewhere, in the meantime, Steam Tank still running amok, getting slowed by Runes of Wrath and Rune, which is great for me because it means my opponent is using his pseudo spells to try to stop a unit that it, they barely damage. Steam Tanks just don't care. Now, sure, there's not going to these Iron Breakers in here. There's some, you know, there's some damage dealers, but simple fact of the matter is. None of these troops can really do much to the steam tanks, at least not quickly. And the Rune of Rathrum is going to expire, and we can just keep pushing. We just need to keep pushing. In the front line, in the meantime, the great swords are going to start dumpstering the Dwarf Warriors. Carl Franz is in here, popping the Reichland Rune Fang, and smacking the Rune Lord around a little bit. And, uh, you know, the Sigmar Sun's getting caught in a bit of a crap spot here, fighting the Longbeards. Uh, we really needed them in a different position, like over here, a little bit. They lined up right here. Uh, but they do get hit by a Ru Master of Wrath and Ruin, which really should have been aimed at the Great Swords, in my opinion. But uh, in this long grind, the Longbeards are going to lose. Uh, the Great Swords are going to take it in the in the long haul, and uh, that's kind of what I'm counting on. That in the long nutritious game, we're going to be coming out on top everywhere. And you can see over here the Swordsmen beating those miners pretty decisively, like I was saying. Um, unfortunately, we get uh, the Overcast and the Jade Wizard here kind of hurt, hurts them a bit. But the Earth Blood and the Steam Tanks will keep them a little in a little bit of a better situation, and keep them pressuring the Rangers. And it's worth noting that. While the steam tanks are an incredibly expensive investment, they both cost 20, it's 4,400 here. This is about a third of my army, actually over a third of my army right here. They are bogging down two slayers. Um, I do believe it's two slayers. Yeah, so that's 1,800 right there. They're bogging down a runesmith who probably is another 1,000. Um, Dwarf Warriors with great weapons, the Ulthar's Raiders, and the Organized Iron Breakers for a good bit. So my opponent was actually getting bogged down quite a lot. Now, a bit of a mistake though on my part was that I should have detached one steam tank to chase after the Ultra Raiders and sent one after the Northern Iron Breakers. But, uh, regardless, despite the blasting charges, Carl is going to dive in here against the Northern Iron Breakers, just smacking him around a little bit. With his very high melee attack, he'll actually dish out some hurt to these guys, which is important, because otherwise Empire troops kind of suck at killing Northern Iron Breakers. Uh, and elsewhere, you know, the winds are they're happening. We force off these miners, who have 16 models. We're going to start collapsing with our swordsmen coming in on the flanks of these, uh, of these long beards, great swords. You know they're winning. 68 kills. They're grinding through. Despite the buffs, we're gonna get a nice little earth blood here. I was trying to get it to hit both of these great swords, but I missed. Uh, Sigmar Sons, they're doing okay. It, they're fighting a hero and a and real long beards, which is basically cost very cost effective trade for me. Uh, and this thing, Stank's still fighting, and we finally got these swordsmen through the line, so they're gonna be able to chase in after the slayers. Uh, these dwarf warriors detaching a little bit to try to intercept them, but I actually barely skate past. Uh, I think this this poor guy might go down. He's getting chopped by some great axes, but uh, is he going to go down? Oh, poor guy. Just look at him. He took one for the team. But the rest of these swordsmen coming in against the Slayers were able to start routing these Ultars Raiders, just running amok. My opponent, Steam Tank, still don't have a lot of HP left. They're exhausted now, which sucks. It means their armor's worth a lot less, but uh, this is where the new regrowth would be so useful. But uh, they now one of them's getting a Chevron, just that's so much damage doing over doing running these stunties over. And at this point, my opponent is going to GG out because it's kind of game over. Um, great swords are swamping him. Carl and the Jade Wizard are compromising everything. Carl over there smacking down on the Rune Lord, and uh, he is out of options. So that is going to be game for the Empire. That's a bit of a gimmicky build. I won't lie. Double steam tank, more than a bit gimmicky. Very gimmicky, uh, especially with the Lore of Life. Uh, kind of gambling on what my opponent wouldn't bring, and uh, knowing that the steam tank, no matter what your opponent brings, is going to be a decent choice. If your opponent goes. Artillery heavy, you can win the artillery duel. If your go, opponent goes shooting heavy, you can um, really just run over his shooting. Or, or, well, shoot his shooting down with your cannon if it's thunderers, and if it's anything else, you can just run him over. If your opponent brings a bunch of slayers, that is the one situation where this could be an issue, but then again, that's why we have a bunch of swordsmen and great swords and units like that. And, you know, the steam tanks can still do damage to slayers. It's important to keep in mind that they can kind of run through them and just pew pew them down. You can cannon them down uh, over time and all sorts of stuff. So steam tanks aren't helpless against slayers either, uh, as long as you micro them a whole bunch. For my opponent, Dogmeat here, um, I think the build is, uh, is definitely a bit flawed. It's not the build I would recommend. I definitely strip off some of the more useless runes, like Rune of Oath and Steel in this situation. I don't think it's that good. I think you're better off uh, investing in more shooting. And... If you're going for a melee rush, which this is kind of what this build feels like, you're better off bringing long with great weapons. They're not the greatest great weapon infantry by any stretch of the imagination, but they're decent. Uh, or longbeards and hammers. Honestly, I would say that you're better off in this sort of situation, if you're just looking for a way to get a decent comp of melee without changing anything else in this build. And I'd try to get some extra shooting, all that sort of stuff. But if you just wanted to run this sort of rush build, I'd like to do double hammers and like double long with three weapons. And I think that would come to roughly the same cost as this blob. Um, if you really want a melee rush. 
Uh, and then, yeah, that would probably be my take on it. But regardless, that's, that's, my, that's my thoughts, that's my two cents. I probably wouldn't run this many heroes either. The crowd control is nice against cavalry, but the simple reality is you're better off being like having just one control unit and then a lot of shooting. Two thunders here would have been a lot more valuable than two runesmiths. And chances are you could get have gotten three thunders in there for this price, so... Who goes? Well played to my bone dog meat. I wanted to show this build because it was a bit troll and a bit scumbaggy, but hey, it's a lot of fun sometimes being a jerk. And uh, yeah, it, it works against the Dawi. Dawi don't have the greatest counters to steam tanks, um, in my opinion, as long as you play the steam tank game right. Uh, and I'm not the biggest fan. I think the steam tanks obviously needs a buff, but uh, this is one situation where it can do okay. So uh, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you found it entertaining and uh, hopefully did not uh, did not uh, upset you guys too much uh if you liked it uh and found it entertaining be sure to leave a like subscribe share all that stuff uh upvote whatever um if you have any comments any criticism any uh, if you hate my guts for steam tank spam be sure to let me know down in the comment section below i'll do my best to respond as soon as i can uh, as usual i do appreciate you all for watching and i'll see you all in the next one bye for now